The G20 summit wrapped up in Pittsburgh Friday with pledges on a series of global issues. On climate change, world leaders vowed strong action but didn't make specific commitments. The summit also called for a new era of balanced economic growth but didn't offer much in the way of tangible steps toward that goal. On executive pay, G20 leaders agreed to a deal that won't cap bonuses but instead ask companies to stretch them out in deferred compensation. The final summit declaration also endorsed granting more voting rights to, quote, underrepresented countries at the IMF and World Bank. Around 200 people were arrested during the two-day summit. At one protest, an identified law enforcement officers were filmed showing a protester shoving that protester into a car and driving away. The officers were wearing army fatigues, but state officials say they weren't military. The abducted protester is reportedly still behind bars. As leaders of the world's richest nations gathered in Pittsburgh for the G20 summit this past Thursday and Friday, thousands took to the streets in protest amidst a heavy police crackdown. Heavily armed riot police were out in force and used tear gas, stun grenades, smoke canisters and sound cannons, which direct extremely loud shrill sounds. It was believed to be the first time sound cannons have been publicly used in the United States. More than 175 people were arrested over two days. Democracy Now! producer Steve Martinez was in the streets of Pittsburgh to cover the story. He filed this report. Activists from around the country gathered in Arsenal Park in order to protest the G20 summit. This is protest organizer Albert Petrarca. We had to go to federal court last week just to get the bare minimum of permits needed to pull this off. So um, the whole thing has been a conscious strategy on the part of the government, from Mayor Ravenstahl all the way up to uh, the West Wing, to try to tamp down the turnout, because the last thing that Obama needs right now is for there to be um, protests from his left, from his base. With helicopter surveillance, the authorities were able to track the demonstrators' movements and were able to block all exits to the park, forcing demonstrators to jump an embankment in order to begin their protest. I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse. We've been tear gassed. <laughs> oh. uh, just been gassed. There's actually, no, no violence at this point except on the part of the police. It's like a total burning of the nose and the eyes, and the mouth. The uh, the demonstration was um, orderly, disciplined, peaceful. And we got to the corner of 37th and Butler Street, and the police just decided to unload tear gas. If you do not disperse, you may be arrested and or subject to other police action. Other police action may include actual physical removal, the use of riot control agents and or less lethal munitions, which could cause risk of injury to those who remain. In an act of civil disobedience, Protest organizer Albert Petrarca sat and blocked a law enforcement vehicle and was promptly arrested. Then the police turned on their new weapon of crowd disbursement, the sound cannon. In all, more than 25 people were arrested, including at least one National Lawyer Guild legal observer. Overnight clashes between police and protesters intensified, resulting in numerous arrests and property damage to local businesses. The overwhelming presence of law enforcement officials prompted anti-war activist Cindy Sheehan to blog, quote, this is what a police state looks like.